In this lesson, we'll be going over how to use mesh gradients, which is, in my opinion, the most advanced feature in Inkscape. So if you can get the hang of how to use this, then you should be pretty limitless with the rest of the software. Before we get started though, I would recommend that you save your document and get in the habit of pressing Control S every few steps, because this tool can be a little glitchy at times and you may experience some crashing. So it would be good to save your work so that you don't lose your progress. So to get started, I'm going to grab the rectangle tool and I'm going to click and drag on my canvas to draw a rectangle like that. And I'm going to take this rounded handle over here and bring this all the way down so that we have rounded ends so that we have this pill like shape. And then I'm going to convert that to a path by going to path and selecting object to path. So what I will do now is I will come over here to my meshes tool. Uh, you can locate it over here in the toolbar. I'm going to click on that. And the way this tool works is it allows you to assign colors to an object based on a grid of coordinate points. And there's two different ways that you can do this. You have regular mesh gradients, and then you have conical gradients. And you can apply it to the fill, or you can apply it to the stroke. So I'm going to show you how to use both of these, starting off with the regular mesh gradient. So if you notice up here in the tool settings, you'll see we have two different settings here. We have rows and columns. I'm going to start off with just two rows and two columns. So if yours doesn't say two and two, just manually type in two and two, and then take your cursor and click and drag over your object like that. And you'll see that we now have a grid of coordinate points placed over the object. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag over all of those coordinate points, and I'm going to change their color uh, to something like pink down here. You could choose whatever color you'd like. Just choose a mid-tone, nothing too light or too dark. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to press escape to deselect those nodes and I'm going to click on this node right here. I'm just going to bring this towards the edge of the rectangle right there. And I'm going to take these handles and just straighten them out like that or rather round them so that they, uh, they go along the contour of this object here. And you may have to take these handles and move them up a little bit to accommodate that spacing. And I'm just going to adjust these handles so that we have the edge of this mesh going around the contour of the object a little more smoothly. I'll take this handle, move this out a little more. I'll adjust this one down a little bit. And again, we want a nice smooth contour there. It doesn't have to be perfect. You're probably not going to get it perfect, but close enough is good enough there like that. And I'll do the same thing with this node here. I want these, I want my mesh to nicely hug the contour of my object. So I'm going to adjust all of these handles here until I have that result. And then I'm going to come over here to this side and do the same thing. I'll move this one out a little bit. And I'm going to move this, I'm going to move this node in close to the edge and I'll take these handles and just move them out like that. And once you've done that, I'm going to take this node here in the center and I'm going to bring this down like this. And then I'm going to use these handles over here to make it so that this line kind of like dips down, kind of, kind of, it sort of like follows the contour of the shape here. I'll do this with both sides as well. I want to bring this down like that. And now what we can do is we can click on each of these coordinate points and change their colors. So if I click on this coordinate point right here, I can hold shift and click on this coordinate point over here as well. I have them both selected now. And then I'm going to hold shift and click on this coordinate point over here. And now I have all three of those coordinate points selected. And I'm going to change the color here just by darkening it a little bit. And you can see we end up with a result like that. And then I'll do the same thing down here. I'll select these coordinate points by holding shift and clicking on them. And I'll make these ones even darker. So you can see the result we're getting here. It kind of looks like a 3D pill. Now, if you notice, we have a little bit of a, a little bit of color error here. So I'm going to click on this handle right here. And I'm going to bring this handle up just to adjust this a little bit, just to make this a little more smooth. There we go. You may have to bring it up a little bit. And I would recommend coming up here to the smoothing and changing this from Kuntz to Bicubic, and that'll make things just look even more smooth. So now we have dark, we have a darker gradient here on the bottom. I'm going to put a lighter gradient up top here. So I'm going to double click this line right here, and that's going to allow us to create a new line there. Let me actually undo that. I'm going to press Control Z to undo that. I'm going to put that a little lower. There we go. And I'll bring this handle and move this up. I'll take this handle and bring it down. And I'm going to click on this node right here. And I'm going to move this handle so that the contour is going up now like that. And I'll do the same thing over here on this side. I'll bring this up like that. 
And now I will click on this node right here and I will make this white. And you can see the effect there. Now it kind of looks like a 3D pill. Now, if you want to add even more in here, you can, you can add more points to this grid. So I'm going to double click the line over here. And now we have another point to work with. I'm going to click on that one and I'm going to make this one white. And then I'll do the same thing over here. I'll click on this one or double click on this one and make that white. There we go. And if I zoom out and go to my selection tool, you can see what we've done there. We've used the mesh gradient to create this 3D pill looking shape. So that's how the mesh gradient works. Let's have a look at the conical gradient now. Now let's have a look at how to use conical gradients. I'm gonna grab my circles and ellipses tool over here. For this demonstration, we're going to create a CD. So I'm gonna click and drag to create a circle. I'm gonna hold the control key so we have a perfectly round circle like that. And let me grab my selection tool and move this towards the center of the page and zoom, on, zoom in on it a little bit. And I'm gonna come back over here to my meshes tool. And now I'm gonna come up here and select this option that says create conical gradient. And this works similarly to the regular mesh. Instead of putting it on a rectangular grid though, it wraps it around a circle. So to show you what I mean, I'm gonna change the rows and columns. This time I want one row and I want 20 columns. 20 is the maximum value for either of these input boxes here. So I'm gonna go with one and 20, and now I'm gonna click and drag like that. And you can see we now have these nodes going in the direction of a circle rather than on a rectangular grid. So let me select all of these, and I'm gonna change their color to 30% gray. You can access that by coming down here to the color bar and hovering your cursor over the colors. If you notice right here, it says 30% gray. I'm gonna choose that one. And now all of these are 20% gray. And now I'm gonna press the escape key to deselect them. And now I'm gonna zoom in over here. I'm looking at the top center line right here. I'm gonna double click this part of the line right here, right between these two lines to add a new line in here, just like that. And I'll come over here and add a new line on this side as well. I'll double click that line. And then I'm gonna come down here and do the same thing to the bottom side. I'm gonna, starting off with the center line as a reference, move over here to the left and put a new line in here. And then I'll come over to the right side and do the same thing. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this line right here. Now, when you click on the line, you're gonna select, it's gonna select the entire area right there. And I'm gonna hold shift and I'm gonna click on this line to select that as well. And now I have both of those lines selected and I'm gonna change their color to yellow. And I'm gonna make this a lighter shade of yellow over here. And now I'm gonna select the lines next to it. So I'm gonna come over here and click on this line right here to the left. And then I'll hold shift and click on this line right here to the right. And then I'll come down here and do the same thing. I'm gonna hold shift, click on this line right here to select it. And you'll know it's selected when you see that node highlighted. And then I'll hold shift and click on this line as well. Now, one thing I wanna point out when you're doing this is to make sure that you're selecting your line, you're gonna hover your cursor over the line and when it's directly placed over the line, you'll notice that a plus symbol populates on the cursor letting you know that it's active. Now make sure you see that plus symbol because if it's not there and you accidentally click, you're gonna deselect the object and you're gonna to have to start all over again with your selection. So I'm gonna hold shift and click on that. And now I have all four of those lines selected. I'm gonna change their color to pink and I'm gonna bring down the lightness of that as well so that we end up with something like that right there. And now I'm going to do the same thing again over here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna select this line out here, hold shift, select this line over here, and then come down here and do the same thing on this side. Select this line and then this line. And these ones I'm going to make cyan. And again, I'll use a lighter shade here. And now I wanna make it look like the disc is reflecting a glare of light. So I'm gonna select this line right here and then hold shift and select this line over here on the other side. And I will make those ones white so that it looks like it's a little glare of light. So you can see what, what we have here. It's starting to look like a CD. So now that we have that in place, I'm gonna create another object on top of this and apply a mesh gradient to that as well. So let me grab my selection tool, click on the object and then right click it and go to duplicate. And I'm just gonna change the color of the entire object. And I'm just gonna make that white just to clear that mesh that was previously on there. And now I'm gonna go back to my meshes tool and now I'm gonna use the opposite values. Instead of one row and 20 columns, I'm gonna use 20 rows and one column. And now I'm gonna click and drag like that. 
And now we have our conical gradient going in circles as opposed to lines. So let me select all of these nodes here and remove their color by clicking on the red X down here. And now what I want to do is let me press escape to deselect them. I want to select each node here. I want to select every other node going up this vertical plane right here. So I selected this node. I'm going to hold shift. I'm going to skip this node and I'm going to select the next one. And I'm just going to repeat that going all the way up. I'm going to select every other node while holding shift so that I have them all selected. And once you've done that, you can fill them in with white. And now we have that sort of effect right there. And I'm going to come down here to the bottom and do the same thing. I'll select this node. And again, every other node going down this vertical plane. And then finally, I want to make these areas. If you notice, the gradient sort of ends right here. This right hand side is the end point of the gradient. So I want to make these areas white as well. I'm going to select these lines right here. I'm going to click on the line itself as opposed to just the node. And I'm going to hold shift and go through here and select each of the lines as well. And, and again, not just the node, but the entire line. We want the whole segment selected. And then I will make those white just like that. And now I'm going to grab my selection tool. I'm going to change the blend mode of this object. I'm going to come over here to my fill and stroke menu. If you see over here where it says blend mode, just click on that and change this to color burn. And now we have that effect right there. So I'm going to bring down the opacity of this a little bit. We don't want that to be too prominent. I'm going to bring that down a little bit. And now I'm going to create some more circles to place on top of here so it looks more like a CD. So let me grab my circles and ellipses tool. Let me click and drag to create another circle. I'm holding control while I do that to lock the aspect ratio. And let me bring the opacity of this up. And let me make this a darker shade of gray, something like 60%. And I'll place this directly over the center of the circle here. I'm going to hold shift and select both of these. And I'm going to center them up vertically and horizontally. Make sure you have relative to, make sure you have that to last selected. And again, if you don't have your align and distribute menu active, you can open it by going to object and selecting align and distribute, which is down here at the bottom of the list. And once that's centered, let me deselect it. I'm going to take just this object right here and I'm going to hold control and shift and just scale this down like that. And I'm going to change the blend mode of this one as well. Let me come back over here to my fill and stroke menu. I'm going to change the blend mode to, I think this one is multiply. There we go. Yeah, now we have multiply. And let me duplicate this again. I'm going to right click this and go to duplicate. I'll make this one white and I'll change the blend mode of this back to normal. And I'll just scale this down like that. And now it looks sort of like a compact disc. And you can change, you can adjust the size of these circles if you want. I'm just eyeballing this here. I don't know if this accurately represents the proportions of a CD, but that looks close enough. And then finally, I'll put one more circle behind the disc, sort of like as a bevel. So I'll take this one here. I'll right click it, go to duplicate. I'll make this one a lighter shade of gray, maybe 20%. I'll scale this up. Send it all the way to the back by clicking this button up here that says lower to the bottom. And I'll just resize this accordingly. I'll make that a little smaller. And I'll maybe even make that a little darker just so it stands out a little more. And there you go. We have used conical gradients to create that CD design. So that is how you can work with mesh gradients and conical gradients in Inkscape. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Inkscape and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.